Constantine Mail is a professor or was a professor of um, electrical engineering over in Germany. And he spent his life, in essence, engaged in Tesla technology and theory. And in his life and in his work, he produced an, a number of um, um, uh, technical reproductions of, of, of uh, things that Tesla had produced. And he has come to an understanding, to a scalar understanding, of the, the wave field domain. And um, I might just give a, one or two examples of, of his work, because they're, they're profound if you think about them. The, um, he, uh, he did some experiments where uh, he took, for instance, um, two Tesla coils, and he, he wired them in, in, in antiphase. So he was dealing with fundamentally the electronic version of a longitudinal signal, which is a sound wave. So the electronic version of a sound wave um, counterphased. So that, you know, when you, let's say, counterphase um, uh, a sound signal through noise cancelling headphones, it seems like the, the sound is gone. Right, and it seems like it just disappeared, and so of course the question is: Does does sound that is counterfaced like that just disappear? And the answer from Tesla uh, technology is no, it doesn't. What it does is it enters the potential domain, or what could be called the the structuring domain, or what could be called the waveform equivalent, or the waveform representation of particulate matter. So that, let's say in this experiment, what he did, he took his two Tesla coils. On one of the coils, he put uh, some agricultural peas, and these were just some seeds that, it, that he got from some source. And on the other uh, coil, he put um, a hormone that was designed by the uh, agricultural science to, uh, to grow these peas. It was a growth hormone made specifically for these peas separated them by six or nine feet or whatever it was, turned a switch on, turned it off, uh, and what he found is that, is that the peas grew as if they had been given the growth hormone. Um, and you say, okay, well, what's happening in a context like that? Uh, what's happening, I think, is that, is that you have this longitudinal wave, electronic form of which, basically a sound wave, and a sound wave is uh, combinatorial, that is, it, it's a unity wave. It, it combines uh, in its very functioning. So, so if I make a noise and talk, you can hear both, and uh, there's a sense that there's two things happening there, but there's really only one signal hitting your ear, and only one signal in that sense hitting your brain. And because the, the sounds have combined. And so in this um, example of the Tesla coils, what happened was that the, through a resonant function, that is through a, a need or what could be called a, a need in, in, in these P's for growth, that is a, uh, an ability to resonate with that which would give the P's growth, when that resonance node is resonated through the, uh, the longitudinal wave capture of, of the hormone, the peas resonate with the hormone and they grow as if they've been given the hormone. And in fact, they have been given the hormone through Tesla resonance. Um, and, you know, that, that shows, that indicates <clears throat> that that there is a, a waveform representation of every form of particulate matter that, that, that in its wave element, um, you can, let's say, combine. For instance, like you could, you know, extend this to, let's say, material functioning, where you take the waveform, oh, let's say the waveform representation of aluminum and you combine it with the waveform representation of, let's say, gold, and you combine aluminum and gold in that way, and you get, what is that then, I think, a metamaterial, which is neither aluminum nor gold, but is the two somehow together. You get some form of transmutation occurring. And I think that's, 
I think that's an implication of this male experiment. Um, and, and I could mention uh, just another one that uh, he did some experiments, and you can maybe um, give a link. There's a YouTube video he did on this where, where um, uh, they had some cancer cells, and, and they, they gave a, a, a chemotherapeutic agent to these cells to kill them. And they put that kind of these dead cells on one Tesla coil. And they also put on the other uh, Tesla coil uh, live cancer cells. And they turned it on, turned it off. And what happened in, in, in the transmission was that, was that cancer death was, was carried through the waveform function and resonated into the live cancer cells and it killed them. And uh, there was a, a report of a doctor who actually um, uh, performed this experiment or this function, if you want to call it that, with, uh, with a living human being. And, and I think it was in Spain. It was like a, a, a cancer doctor. And he had a, a cancer patient who was terminal. And, and the patient said, listen, if you want to try something with me, you know, it's like it's my last hope. And, and what they did was they, they took some cancer cells from his saliva and his urine, I think, if I'm recalling correctly, but they took cancer cells from him, um, added a chemo agent to those cancer cells, killed the cancer cells, put him in between the two Tesla coils, flipped the switch on, and it got rid of his cancer. So there you have, um, you can see that the, uh, the, the function of, of, of this combinatorial waveform uh, uh, functioning is, is uh, put to use um, in, in, in a very constructive way to, to, uh, uh, to aid the health of people. This is, I think, one of the potentials of, of Tesla technology. And, and, and personally, I don't mind giving up a little bit of privacy to gain the kind of benefits that that, that kind of technology can bring. Um, um, but you know, suffice it to say that that uh, that there have been quite a number of experiments like that done through Constantine Mail, uh, uh, where they have showed that 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 this technology does in fact operate in that fashion. Um, really profound, and it profoundly changes one's understanding of what matter is, because matter isn't just this this kind of particulate three D reality. It has a it's like it has a flip side. And that flip side is, is waveform. And in the waveform reality of matter, it's not separate. It's not, you know, particle by definition means to be separate. That's what it means to be spatially extended is that you are spatially localizable, i.e. you are different from every other particle. That's what a particle understanding gives you. And so particle just means separation. Space, normally conceived, just means separation. What's missing from that framework is the unity functioning of the waveform domain. And that unity functioning gives back to science the actual polarity of separation and unity, which is a true polarity, to, to then operate coherently. And so, and so what, again, this step into, into Tesla science portends for society is a step into coherence, which, uh, you know, we've had enough of, of the destructivity of incoherent ways of uh, being, including incoherent sciences. And, you know, anything that is classical is incoherent by definition. Anything that is post-classical is coherent. And it gives you, let's say, like quantum physics is a coherent science because it has both wave and particle as coexistent realities all the time, simultaneously, in any function of reality whatsoever. And because it's coherent, it gives you coherent power. And so the power of quantum physics is, you know, compared to any classical science like Newtonian or even uh, Einsteinian science, is, is far greater, exponentially greater. And that's because of its coherence, its polar coherence, which is what you get when you add Tesla science to the current scientific mix as it now stands.